Oh, don't mind me, lads. I'm just looking for the best players in FPL. Whoa, what's that I see? It's big boy Bamford winning the Ballon d'Or. Wow, just our best ever player. But unfortunately, we can't have 11 Bamfords. Who else is good to have? Welcome to the Game Week 7 Players to Watch. This is the series where I suggest players to watch that might have been wearing camouflage kits and just gone under the radar. You haven't seen anything about them. Where I try and suggest players that you might not have put too much thought into rather than the absolutely stupidly obvious players that obviously everybody knows about. So why make a video about it, innit? <laughs> but the first, Game Week 7 geezer to have the pleasure to join us here today. It's Sir Patrick Bamford and damn son. I've never seen a striker so elegant with expert finishing just like him wow but wait hang on um what's that he scored six goals and got two assists in his first six games this season and he's gonna go all the way and win the golden boot okay maybe not that just quite yet but come on big b bamford here uh you can stop playing this epic prank and pretending you're like the best ever footballer in the premier league right ha you fooled us you can stop now <laughs> but if you guys don't know the reason why this guy just gets the hate and has so much weight to carry on his shoulders it's just because he's notoriously known for missing a lot of easy chances which you know usually happens less in the premier league as well where he just lacks that killing composure where last season in the championship he had like the most big chances out of anyone and no any other top amount of goals because that's how many he missed with his finishing so bad he couldn't even finish a plate of chips for tea but this season he's just built different man and is he finally ready to slam dunk every hater into the ground everyone that doubted him and just destroy this league well actually maybe <laughs> with the way that Leeds play it just kind of suits the Premier League and he's actually great for them to compete against anyone and score goals against anyone where Bamford actually seems to be there nailed on forward for now, even forcing Rodrigo to play in midfield instead of playing instead of him. But now with the sexy, spicy Pablo Hernandez back, how will that all change? But Bamford has just kind of scored a hat-trick, and he has scored six goals in six games. So maybe, just maybe, especially at his now 5.9 million price, he should be in our considerations, right? Hmm. <laughs> the fixtures aren't the best for Leeds right now, though. If that even affects them, anyway. They just beat, like, almost top of the table Aston Villa. They can beat anyone, right? <laughs> but Bamford is our first player to watch this week to see if he can keep doing it. And one to keep your £5 Amazon magnifying glass on to see how he does. With our next glorious top athlete to join the watch list this week, it's Diogo Jota. Now the wee Portuguese man was bought for quite a thick boy fee, probably way too expensive to just be a bench warmer and water boy, right? But he's not really gonna be starting over Salah Omani, really, is he? Like, come on now. And the only way he might start is if there's a big injury or something, or the very slight possibility that Firmino drops back as a cam, an attacking midfielder, making one of Salah Omani the strikers so Jota can play on the wing. And oh wait, that's exactly what happened this week. Well, hey. <laughs> but um, it might not tickle your pickle as much here as Liverpool just didn't seem that good. But was it just a slight bit of fatigue from midweek Champions League? Was it just Sheffield United making it difficult for Liverpool? Or was it some of the changes of personnel and the missing of key players like Van Dijk just messing up all the balance? Now, the exact answer to that is just unknown. Well, unless you look at a horoscope because those things are definitely accurate, right? They'll tell you anything. But Jota starting did actually do him a good as he netted a goal, ooh. Getting himself nine points this week whilst also getting two bonus points, which would make him a very, 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 very good option. Very good. If and only if he was guaranteed to play or just play a lot more, you know? As he's a Liverpool winger, goal scoring winger that only costs 6.3 million almost half of Salah's price imagine lads the absolute dream <laughs> but again we aren't so sure if Liverpool are looking to line up like this again if they did that just for a switch of personnel or if they did that to try and counter Sheffield United tactic so we're not quite sure what's appertaining what they plan on doing so for now it's better to just watch and observe making him a player to watch for game week seven with our next player a very much maverick pick of the week it's the bubble blow in West Ham's Defender, Vladimir Kufal. Now with a name like that, no one ever wants to mess with you, right? <laughs> but out of all the players to look at, uh, I choose a West Ham defender with their wibbly wobbly defence. Uh, yeah, uh, what are you doing, Bacon Boy? But hang on, hang on, wait a minute. He could actually be a decent hidden gem here. Kufal joined West Ham very late in the transfer window, but has started the last three games for them. Where in those three games, he hasn't blanked once 
getting a clean sheet in one and an assist in the other two as well. Which, um, by the way, were also games against Leicester, Spurs and Man City. Not the easiest. Oh. <laughs> now, yeah, a defender transfer is a bit of waste man energy, especially being a budget defender for West Ham. Definitely shouldn't be top priority right now. But actually, West Ham's fixtures are looking to be very good soon after the next game. Meaning this could actually be a very good secret gem that could potentially get you quite a lot of points. Who knows? And he is currently only owned by 0.2% of players. So not only is it points, very shh. Secret points no one else is getting. Perfect. And since he's came in, they have gone for five at the back. So not only is it more likely to get clean sheets, you'd hope, but also he can now go forward a lot more and could be involved in a lot more Galassos too. But maybe old your horses, don't splash your cash just yet. But maybe just have a look, have a gander, have a stare and just see how he does. And if he does do a good, then you do do a transfer and get him in and get all the points. See, FBL is easy, right? Just uh, get 11 Kufals. Yeah, that sounds good. With our next player being so so prestigious, he shares a first name with the best ever footballer to ever exist in Wilfred Boney. It's Wilf Zaha. Now, yeah, okay, Zaha might be a bit of an obvious one here, yeah? Yeah, you know when I said uh, this show is different to the watch list and I never suggest uh, obvious players? Uh, yeah, forget about that for now. But actually, I'm here to say Zaha might not be as good as we think he is right now as an FBL asset. I know, right? What? But he has got five goals this season, but two of those were penalties. But he might not be keeping his penalties, and that's why I'm here to inform you today. Well, last game, we saw the actual penalty merchant, Milivojevic, start for like the first time in like 10 years, it feels like, where most would assume he would probably take the penalties when he's on the field because he just has a fetish for them. He just loves them, he does. But again, we're not quite sure. Van Arnold might even take them. So Zaha might not be as good as it seems, but with his next few fixtures and pretty much good form and playing out of position as he's still playing as a striker, yeah, he's not the worst of options. Uh, you probably still should get him in. <laughs> but then again, on the other side, Zaha does go hot and cold more frequently than like the British weather. <laughs> like we don't know if he's going to score an hat-trick or literally not even take a shot for the next like seven months. We don't know if he's going to keep up the scoring or just carry on pretending to be an Olympic diver, diving all over the pitch and just not doing anything. But that is exactly why we need to watch him, making him a player to watch on the watch list. But have you guys heard of the cha-cha slide? Yeah, of course, of course you have. But have you heard of the che che train? With our next player being Che Adams. Now, some people will have a bit of an apple puffle over this guy. As last season, he was literally wearing banana shoes and couldn't kick a ball straight. And at the start of this season, he was bloody playing hide and seek and not involved in any of the action at all. But actually, recently, he's had two goals and two assists in his last four games, which has actually been better than quite a few other forwards going around right now. And he is only priced 5.8 million. So maybe not the worst of Southampton cover options, right? But yeah, there are probably other better players who are more important to their teams and right now have better fixtures. And to that, I say, yeah, that's true. Fair point. Uh, yeah, okay, fair enough. <laughs> but for me, he is someone we should keep an eye on. Maybe not get in for right now. But if he keeps on improving and playing like he has been the last couple of games, then maybe, just maybe, one day, he could get up to Daddy Ings level and be our next daddy. Wow, yes. But only time will tell if that will happen, making him a player to watch, watch list player. With our final gentleman to finish off the list for Game Week 7, players to watch, it's Max Kilman. Now, yeah, I am suggesting when he finally blanks after he just had two big holes. <laughs> but something more interesting than his points happened in the Wolves game, which could potentially answer the main question on all of our tongues right now. Which is, will he be nailed and keep playing? And that interesting thing that happened was that Sice came off for Marcel instead of Kilman. And the fact that Kilman has been playing in that centre-back spot, forcing Sice to play as the wing-back, does that mean he is actually at least more nailed than Sice and have even more chance to start, potentially playing every game ever for Wolves again? Now the answer to that has big fat terms and conditions everywhere, as not a single person in the world can tell you how nailed he is, because realistically, he could have an absolute stinker of a game next game and then not never play again, you know? But at his current form, you would say he probably will play. And that is quite an important thing to remember with players like him, which aren't quite nailed, but could be the vital players to get in those differential FBL points to help your rank. But the fact he might not be 100% nailed, and still a very risky pick even with how good he's playing, he has had two back-to-back -back killer defensive actions, getting him two clean sheets and 21 points in the last two games. So that, to me, 
sounds like someone that I would want to pay a risk with. <laughs> I mean, if I was the Wolves manager myself, I would definitely play him every week. But unfortunately, this is Nathan Bacon FC and not Nuno Bacon FC. So I can't do that for you, lads. Sorry. But Kilman could be a potential Wolves defender who is really good at defending for only 4.1 mil right now. Absolute bargain. Which is why we need to watch him to see if he keeps on playing. And if he does... Let him keep on scoring so we can keep on getting all of his points. Making him our final player of the week. Ah. And that is it. It's getting close to that time where we are starting to see how most teams want to line up with all of their players and all of their new arrivals. And it's more to see who is in the best form rather than discovering new players and how they work in their new teams. But that is actually more of a reason to pay attention and keep an eye out for who is whapping in all of those goals and all of those glasses as we try and pick all of the best players to win all the best transfers throughout the season. But thanks for watching and remember... <laughs> Don't be a cheeky scrub! Subscribe to Nathan Bacon right now. <laughs>